What's up everyone, Azra Akhmad here and today I'm going to try to teach you how to play Naga. So, first thing first, what's the goal? The goal for you is to reduce your opponent's life points to zero. And you can reach that goal by summoning creatures and attacking him or her. To play you'll need some, uh, some things first. So first of all you'll need a deck, a deck of cards right here. You'll need also elemental cards. Right here. You'll need uh, some way to count uh, the mana and uh, t to keep track of the mana and the life points. So I'm using uh, coins. And you will also need a 20 sided dice or a piece of paper to keep track of the life points. So now let's talk about the different type of cards and the place they belong to on the field. So first thing first we have the creatures. So you have normal creatures and uh, effect creatures with uh, a bar. So creatures are easily recognized and are the most common cards in this game. You can recognize them because there is nothing in the top left corner and in red you have the life, the attack, the level which should, will determine the cost of uh, the card and the element under. And then you have the name. For an effect creature it's uh, basically the same thing but the name is on the left and you have the effect on the right. When you summon creatures they go in the summon zone which is right above this line. Then you have the equipment card. So you can recognize an equipment card because there is a, a, a red symbol in the top left corner right here. And uh, to read uh, an, uh, an equipment card you can watch in the you can see in the top right corner that uh, there is something written here is a dark fan this will be the type of creature it will uh, apply to but not always sometimes there won't be uh, this uh, this little part so uh, it will apply to you can uh, attach it to any type of creature um and uh, under this there is the uh, the stats uh, the stat boost so it's plus one in blue, so it's plus one in attack for a Dark Fang creature. So for instance, if you summon a Dark Fang creature and you have uh, this in your hand, you can put it right under and then uh, you have equipped uh, this creature with uh, the equipment card. And last but not least, we have the field cards. So you can recognize them because there is an orange symbol in the top left corner and uh, it works basically uh, the same as the equipment cards but when you put it um, here is the summon zone, uh, summoning zone you can uh, you gotta put it right uh, in between the two uh, the two play mats like this and it will affect both player so fire creature creatures will have plus two in attack when uh, the uh, when the field will be uh, activated then here is the deck area and the graveyard area the zone I mean you put your deck right here and your graveyard will be here then you got your mana zone here and you can put your life points right here so this is how the field works so now that you know how card works let's start playing a, a game so on your first turn you will draw four cards at the beginning of the game I think. and you will immediately earn two mana that you will need to convert right away so to convert mana all you gotta do is to put it on uh, a card so here I want two fire mana so I put two uh, counter on uh, the fire card but I can also do like I can also choose to have two on the two separate like this or uh, I can do whatever I want, but when you earn mana, you get immediate. You immediately get to convert it, so you can't uh, leave mana right here. And if you have put it mana on the fire card, you can just take the fire mana and convert it into uh, earth mana or any type of mana. So I chose the fire card, and uh, on your if you're the first to to go, you can't attack right away. So then the rest of the turn goes like a normal turn, so you earn two manas again. So I decide to put one on fire and one on air. 
and you'll see just uh, just, after, just after that so I'll also need to draw a card I earn two mana and I draw a card and uh, after that it's the action phase so during the action phase you can do whatever you want so summoning, summoning creatures attacking acti activating effects and uh, everything so to summon a creature what you need uh, to, to do first is to uh, to look at uh, the level like right here it's level 1 creature so that means that it's it will requires 3 mana of its element so 3 fire manas so if uh, it's uh, if it was level 2 like right here it will require 5 manas and if it's level 3 you will need 7 manas so as you can see I've got 3 fire manas so I can choose to summon the the red blob and toss the mana away so if I wanted to summon for instance the harpoon shark I will have to remove all my water manas so 5 right here and summon it so you so it's pretty simple to summon cards but you can also sacrifice cards to summon others so here I've summoned uh, the blue blob. And let's say I've got some fire mana. Let's say I've got four fire manas, and uh, I want to summon the fire spirit, but I can't since I need five. You can sacrifice a creature which is the sa which has the same element. So here is fire, fire. I can sacrifice it since it's level one. It will turn into one fire mana. If it was level two, two fire manas. Level three, three fire manas. So you put it in your graveyard and you can summon it. Okay, quick edit guys, I decided that uh, it would be more interesting if the creatures turn into two times a level. What I mean by that is that a fire a level one fire creature will turn into uh, two fire manas, a level two fire creature or water creature. I say a level two water creature will, two will turn into four water manas and uh, level three of creature will turn into six of manas. Back to the video now. Can summon the fire. I can summon the fire spirit. Also, there are some special cards. Actually, there is only one for the moment, which is the winged frog, and it is water and air at the same time. So that means that I can summon it with air manas, with only air manas. So if I got three air manas, I can summon it. But I can also summon it with uh, three water manas, uh, since it's also water. But I can also summon it with like one water mana and three air manas. I can combine. Uh, I can combine these two. So if you're playing uh, with uh, a deck that has uh, two uh, attributes like water and air, in the, this case, it could be pretty interesting. So this is how you summon uh, sp special creatures with. Uh, with two uh, elements. So now that you know how to summon cards, you will also need to know how to activate effects. It's pretty simple actually. Just read the effects, see if you've uh, fulfilled the requirement, and uh, just activate it. So it's written that if I, uh, w uh, when it's summoned, I can steal uh, a mana from my opponent, so I can when I summon it. But sometimes you have uh, effects. Uh, like uh, on these cards where it's uh, written sonic or unique spell so when you have a unique spell you can only use it once uh, when the creature enters the world like enough like just enter the world it's written that when I summon it I can take a fire creature from my deck uh, the first a fire creature from my deck so uh, when I summon it I activate its effect but I won't be able to activate it uh, again Except if uh, I have another Nuffleck and I summon it, or if uh, it goes to my graveyard and comes back to my world, then I will be able to reactivate it if I uh, fulfill the requirement. Then you have choice right here. That means that when uh, you uh, um, when this effect uh, when you uh, fulfill the requirement, so uh, this card is when you attack a creature it will turn this element and you can choose to turn uh, into the element of the creature or not 
you are not forced to. So that's it for the effect. And then for the interesting part, attacking, which is the most important pa part. So to attack, so let's say that his this is your uh, summoning zone, uh, your summoning uh, zone, yes, and this is your opponent summoning zone. So uh, what you uh, do to attack, you just say which creatures attacks which one. So here is red blob attacking white blob. So you take the attack one and uh, you uh, you reduce the opponent creature life by the attack. There is no uh, type uh, there is uh, no blocking or uh, counter attacking uh, in this game. So uh, you just reduce the opponent's uh, life by uh, the attacking card points. And uh, if uh, this uh, card if this uh, card's life is reduced to zero, then it's destroyed and it goes to the graveyard. And then you have uh, direct attacks. So this is how you win the game by attacking your opponent directly. Uh, I forgot to say that if I take this card for instance and this one, this card has 7 attack, this one has only 3 life, if I attack it with that card, my opponent won't get any damage. Uh, it will uh, like block, even if I said that there is no, no blocking in this game, but it will uh, take all the damage and uh, these, uh, the, the 4 points won't get, won't uh, attack my won't uh, won't reduce my opponent's life. So, as I said, there is the direct the direct attack. This is how you win the game by attacking your opponent directly. Uh, so, if I take uh, this card, uh, if there is no monster in my uh, opponent's uh, summoning zone, I can attack him directly, him or her. So I just uh, do it like uh, w with uh, a standard monster, so but instead of uh, removing life points from the monster, I remove them from my opponent's life. When you've done everything you wanted during that turn, it's your opponent's turn, and it goes on until uh, the until one has normal life. So yeah. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.